Hi there. Thank you very much for clicking on this video. Hopefully the subject is of interest based on the title that I explain it properly. Burying your rhizomes, especially when it comes to setups that are considered more of a wet environment in the pot. There is no wet dry cycle, so to speak. We don't want pseudobulbs to rot away, new growth to have a problem with, old bulbs that are in the pot to decline sooner than their normal lifespan would be because the setup actually provides a very wet environment. So as a reference video, because several times you will see me potting up this way and other times that way, I want to put this video out there to show you that burying pseudobulbs in LECA and self-watering is no problem. Recently, I did a video with my Oncostello Wildcat and there was a pseudobulb that was buried in the pot and it had rotted, so to speak, you could call it that. And it could be misleading that it was the setup that was causing the rot. That is why we're here staring now at the pot of my Colmenara Masai Red. And I wanted to show you how deeply I buried the back pseudobulbs when I first got this orchid and put her into this pot, which was about two years ago now. She's been living in this pot. She is a massive orchid. So look at the size of these bulbs. I mean, you know, this is a handful. This is like a medium sized guava, so to speak. But what I wanted to point out is this. See how deep the back bulbs are in the media. Look at it back here as well. There. And in two years, none have rotted off. So I want to just bring that to your attention that it is okay, especially if you have a climbing orchid, it is okay to bury pseudobulbs if you want to leave a gap in the back to aerate the back part and not have it totally covered if you're unsure, then that is fine as well. There's no need for Lekka to be here seeing as I have no point of growth. In my case, I potted her up in the middle of the pot because this is a beast of an orchid and I did not want to be doing this every year with her. Her root system is extremely active, very, very strong on the root front. Big fleshy roots as well. So they need space. And that is why I covered the back of the pot as well with Lekka because there's roots everywhere. There's even a root coming out here right now. There's one thing I do want to say, however, check your environment. I work with a dry top layer in my favor as best as I possibly can. So in my environment, I have no humidity at all in the summers and marginal humidity in the winters. But because of my dry top layer, I can be quite radical with how deep I bury my pseudobulbs. And the Maasai Red is somewhat of a climber because subsequent growths are now not buried at all. They are actually on the top of the media. So I probably have another, guessing by its dynamics, another two years to be able to deal with this orchid in this pot. New growth is coming right there already, which is fabulous. I like the direction it's going. I still have a few more years before I have to address this orchid. But you see, no issues at all. Dry top layer, it works when you want to bury some pseudobulbs. If you are in an extremely humid environment, your orchids are living outside, you're working with semi-hydro, and there's constant, constant rain, I would be a little bit more careful. You can still bury the pseudobulbs without any problems, but maybe not as radically as I have done in this case. All right, so it's just a question of what is your climate like? Do you have humidity of 70% and higher steady throughout the entire year, then you won't be dealing with that much of a dry top layer at all. In my case, I have an average of 30% humidity for about eight months of the year. And that in combination with hot winds, I have a dry top layer of probably a minimum of two finger deep. Sometimes I say one big lecker pebble as a layer, and then add another big lecker pebble. That is my dry top layer. So let me just make that. That would be my dry top layer before down in the roots, everything is a little bit more damp. So I have that to work with. 
And that is why I can bury my pseudobulbs to the degree that you see there and have absolutely no issues whatsoever. I'm going to show you an example with regards to cattleyas, a rhizome. So this is Oncidium alliance, in my case, Colmenara masai red. So let's go to what the rhizomes on cattleyas or lalias do. And I'll give you an example of that. This is my little cattleya intermedium. I still think it's a variety of quinine. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it is an intermedium. Now look how low the rhizome is in the pot. I hope you can see that. That is way down in the pot and there's lecker all around it in the base covering the rhizome, including moss. The reason being, this is also proving to be somewhat of a little climber. It's not a drastic one, but the potential, the characteristics are there. The next new growth is coming up above the leka, and this one is already so high up off the ground, so to speak. I put some moss around so that any new roots don't have to dry out and I don't have to worry about them desiccating and burning on the leka. So that works as well for the rhizome. The rhizome can be buried. Again, one lecker pebble of depth is a minimum layer of what you can get away with, even in a human environment. And in my case, I can be a little bit more radical and go to two layers of lecker below and leave the rhizome in the middle. The reason I say this is important because I'm going to show you now another example as to why I do that with my orchids. When I remember as best as possible, because look at this Lelia, Lelia purpurata variety by Koiserim, also has sort of a little bit of an upward growth habit. The back part is really low and covered by Leca. And lo and behold, the next growth is already a little bit higher and now the roots are trying to find their way down in the pot. Dry top layer, lecker that can dry out, becomes a desiccating agent on the roots. I have to go around and spray the surface of my pots, especially in this time of year, probably down three times a day. Great when you've got the time, not so good if you're busy. Having said that, I have the time I've gotten used to it, it's become part of my routine, but this one was just repotted last year, so I'm not going to disturb it again. I could have gone even lower in the pot with the rhizome and covered more leka so that these roots would not be exposed to the outdoors and then just go straight into the pot without having to worry and do their job. I have some collateral damage with other pots, which I will show you now. This is my Brassocatlia Sunya Green. And you can see if I had buried that rhizome a little bit more, then I wouldn't have had the root loss that I have here now. You see that? The root tip has stopped growing. I either wasn't fast enough to keep it hydrated, but it touched the lecker and stopped growing. What I tell myself in cases like these is, yes, I will get collateral damage because of my dry, dry climate. But if I get 90% of the roots to go straight into the pot, I'm still okay. But that can be avoided if I bury and cover the rhizome. This root would never have been exposed to the outdoors and it would have made it. Growth, new growth, if they are buried, absolutely no problem either. In a dry climate like mine, the new growths would make it quicker and better than what I'm going to have to do now is keep spraying and well my breeze now is warm enough these growths will not fail but I have to be super super careful because I also have another case let me show you with my Cattleya iricolor sometimes I use a microfiber to help me and then I can target the misting right at the microfiber so that I do not get close to the new growth the bud or the nubbin that is starting to form and here you can see that is the danger of me having to miss so much. I don't think this growth is going to fail, but it is a warning sign that I've been getting too close to that new growth. So I moved my microfiber back a bit and I'm only targeting the microfiber here. I'm getting new roots growing into the pot. So mission accomplished in this case, 
but I could have buried this one a little bit deeper in the pot if I had remembered that the roots come out quite easily at the surface and have difficulty finding their way in. So you see, I have a root here. This is a relief. It failed in the beginning. It has branched, but now it's going into the pot. So if you have a very, very dry climate, like mine, for seven, eight months of the year, and you find yourself with very dry top layer with leka, and if you don't have the little pebbles to counteract that, that the orchid room made famous and showed us that it works, it can be done to avoid a dry top layer, then a lot of misting or bury the rhizome one leka depth and two, depending on your climate, so the roots will never see the light of day and go straight into the pot. And I will show you an example now regarding a division. Here is a division of my golf green hair pig. No roots, but I have a new growth coming right there. That's great, so happy. There's also an eye over here somewhere that could still do something. With this, if this were now to be potted up, which I don't do until I see at least some action on the nubbin, because there is really no need to be jiggling around with this, let it do its thing, let the growth mature. But if I were to pot this up, I would have no problem that the leka reaches all the way up to the growth and I would bury the entire rhizome under one or two layers of leka so that these new roots find their way straight into the media and do not crawl around. That is its safety valve, so to speak, because the new growth now is taking a lot of energy. You can see how desiccated the pseudobulbs are. The roots will take even more energy and you really don't want to waste all that energy and then have roots fail because they're on the top of a dry surface. But in my case, I would bury that to like a bead levels down and it would be no problem whatsoever. So if you're watching this video after I've pointed you here, I hope that explains why you see some of my pseudobulbs, some of my rhizomes buried in leka. I do not do the same thing for monopodial orchids at all. I'm very, very wary. I have issues with a dry top layer, especially with Phalaenopsis when they grow new roots to get them into the leka and be happy. But I do not do that with monopodial orchids because for me, I'm still learning about how to grow Phalaenopsis orchids successfully doing all the things I'm doing right now and keeping them happy before I experiment and go on a little bit further and start to bury the bases so that I can have roots growing into the pot straight away. I hope this explains why you see rhizomes buried, pseudobulbs buried, or as in some cases in the back here, why the roots have failed to some degree but I'm not concerned because I have 90% of them going in the pot. So if you see this, don't worry, it's under control. If you see this, don't worry, that is also under control. If you see buried pseudobulbs like my Colmenara Maasai Red, that is also under control. Let me know if you have any questions. I was trying to make this video relatively quick but I thought some example would show where I'm headed and where my dangers lie and why I believe burying rhizomes in my environment is not an issue. Let me know your climate. If you have any questions and you want to try it out for yourself, you want to double check with me first, whether it's okay with your environment, your climate, your humidity, temperatures, etc. Leave me a comment below and let's discuss. I appreciate everybody that has decided to watch this video. Thank you so much for your time and have yourselves a wonderful day. Please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.